Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back to do some repair work on this MusaShare X7. And the owner of it contacted me about the bias meters quit working. Specifically, I think it was the right channel. I can't remember. But anyway, what he said would happen when he would turn this knob to check the bias, that it would just like peg one way, then the other. And then when he moved to another, you know, tube, then it would just go dead. And then he'd come back to the other one and it would just peg it. And then he'd go back to the view meter and it would work. And he had let this sit for about a year. I think even in the box in a closet. Don't know, you know, how humid it conditions or whatever. And he couldn't get the bias pots to work though. And he started, you know, twisting the knobs and it didn't make any difference, which you should never do. If you don't have a meter, don't touch the knobs because you don't know what you're doing. And it scared me a little bit because he said, well, I went all the way one way and all the way the other. Yeah, don't don't ever do that. But but anyway, he couldn't get the bias meter to work. And so he sent it to me. And by the time it got to me, it acted a little flaky. And then when I flipped it back and forth about four or five times, then it started kind of working. And I think what was going on is it had some corrosion in this rotary switch. And I could have sprayed some deox in it and probably got it working. But it has these are pretty cheap looking little rotary switches. And not all of these open frame ones are, you know, garbage, but I'm just thinking this is probably a suspect. So I found some nice silver plated contact and closed, although these are plastic, they seem to be pretty high quality. So we're going to replace these rotary switches with some nicer ones and hopefully eliminate this problem point that I've seen on several forum posts. So let's get busy doing this upgrade. Okay, so let's get busy repairing this amp. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the knob from this switch because we can't remove it from the underside without doing that. You just come in here from the side with an Allen key, get the knob loose and take it off like that. Simple, simple. So now we're going to turn this beast over. So the first thing we're going to swap out is this rotary switch. And I think this was the real culprit that was causing this owner the problems he had. First thing you want to do is remove these four screws that are holding it down. And on this power switch side, you may have to... I removed the insulation on this switch. You're going to have to bend this cap up so you can get in here and get this screw in this back corner out. Like that. Now, before you get very far into this, get your cell phone out and take some close-up pictures of these switches at different angles. And I'm going to go ahead and take pictures of these potentiometers too. Because you want to be able to refer back to these in case you get confused on where the wires hook up. Because you do not want to hook these things up wrong. And it's simple enough right now to take a picture with your phone and then you know that you're going to be connecting things back up just like they were. So, before we take the rest of these screws out, we're going to go ahead and disconnect some of these wires. It might help to have some little needle nose pliers like this where you can heat up the joint and pull the wire away. And then, I think I'm going to go ahead and Take these last two screws out. It does help if you have a screwdriver that's a little bit magnetized. Then the screws will stick to the screwdriver. 
just like that. And now we want to disconnect the rest of these wires. We got those two loose. And pull that off. That off. Before we disconnect that one, we want to go ahead and mark this for the polarity. And since this is the ground side for the other wires, or the black wire hooks up there, go ahead and get a sharpie and just put some black marker on there to make sure we don't get those reversed. And then we take that one off. And take this one off. Okay, the next one, we've got this variable resistor here. Don't mess with it. Just unsolder it from this one terminal like that. And there we go. We got this removed. We're going to be replacing it with this guy, which is a much higher quality. It's got silver contacts. It's sealed. You can see how this is just an open one. And you can see the contacts inside it. These are prone to oxidizing. And that's why he was unable to set the bias. So this is a, again, a nice uh, silver plated contact sealed switch that we're going to be replacing this guy with. It's similar. Unfortunately, Mauser did not have a metric version, which is what this is. And it's, this one's also got, so this has a round shaft, this has a D shaft. Not a big deal. We can make this work. We're just going to have to drill some stuff out and do a little modifying, but I will show you how to do that. So next we want to do is get the most hated tool on the channel, although you could use an adjustable wrench, and take this nut off, and remove this guy from this board. And actually, let me get the amplifier out of the way and work on mounting this on the board. Okay, so one of the first things we need to do is we need to drill this hole out because it's not big enough for this to fit through. And the other thing I noticed, and it's a little hard to see, but when you get one of these, you'll see it. Right at the very base of it, there's a little step. And you need to drill this hole out bigger than just this thread to have this thing sit flush with this bottom part. And so I found a 15, 30 seconds bit seems to work perfect for that so we're going to come in here and drill this hole out just like that and then another tool i find super handy it's a little guy that looks like this it's like a deburring tool and i think it's made for deburring the inside of water pipe after you cut it off that galvanized kind of pipe but it works great coming in here and and then you can come in and do the inside of it let's flip this over might be easier to deeper this side from this direction if you don't have one of these tools you can use a little file it works just as well so the next thing we have is this little indexing pin. And we need to drill the hole in this plate for that indexing pin. Now one of the things we want to make sure of is because this is a D-shaped shaft instead of being round, and our knob has this set screw, to have some adjustability, we want to make sure that the set screw goes on like that. So it's opposite the D and that way it'll be pulling the knob over now you could if you want to try to perfectly align it and have that screw go into that flat that might be ideal but I don't trust myself on putting this indexing hole in the perfect place so it aligns perfectly with the top side of the amp and the marks that are on it so you need to look at the top of the amplifier and make sure that you're indexing this switch 
so the mark is straight across when the switch is in the correct position. So in this case, we want to make sure it's all the way to the left and actually it would be like this so that this would be straight across just like that and you can see there's already a hole here but it's not in quite the right place it's off just a little bit so you could either turn this plate around and drill a new hole or you could get a little file and just file this slot out until that hole will fit in there and that's what we're going to do so let me do that and I can show you what that looks like okay so we got this slot elongated and that allows us to get this indexed right where we want we turn this knob all the way counterclockwise and then install the amp with this straight across to the first mark which is the meter for the VU meters the line will line up with the mark on the front of the amplifier be just like that with the set screw opposite this flat now this is for the left hand side of the amp on the right hand side it's reversed you're going to have the knob turned all the way clockwise and we want this flat perpendicular to this edge and so you're going to have to turn it like that then you're going to have to drill a hole approximately right in this little area here to have our index mark line up the way we want it to. And so, again, on the right-hand side of the amp, you have to drill a hole. On the left-hand side, like we're doing now, with this turned all the way counterclockwise, that'll line up perfect. And again, you might want to, like, hold it in place in the amp and kind of visualize what's going on because you want to make sure that you have this set screw up against this round part. Again, you could have it go into this flat, but I feel more comfortable going over there. So anyway, the next problem is because this is not a metric switch, and they do make a metric one, but nobody had one in stock, the hole inside of here is a little bit too small to fit over this shaft. And there's two ways of dealing with it. You can either drill this out just a little bit so it matches this shaft, or you can get a little small file like this, and I actually used one that was a little flatter than this one. It is quite a needle file. Oh, here it is. I use this little file here, and then just file down the outside diameter of the shaft until it'll fit inside this knob. And kind of checking my progress with a caliper and as I'm going along to make sure I'm keeping it fairly parallel. So again, you can either drill this out or you can file this down. Given this is plastic, I think I'm just going to file this down like I did on the other side and get this where the novel fit on it. So let me do that off camera and then we'll come back and put this thing inside the amp. Okay, so here's where the phone pictures come in super handy. We can look and see where the wires were hooked up before. This is actually going to be rotated a little bit from the way it was originally installed, but no biggie. There's plenty of extra room on these wires. First, you want to get something like a resistor lead and put it across these two pins. We're going to go ahead and solder this guy in place. like that. It doesn't hurt to put a little extra blob on there because we are going to be attaching some other stuff to those leads. The next thing we need to do is connect this one we put the black mark on over here by the ground side. That's a good thing we marked it because we would have no idea which way it went. Again, this is where you come in here and look at your phone picture to make sure you're hooking this stuff up right. This one's going to go right here. Like that. We want to solder this blue guy on right there. 
find a little spot where you can stabilize everything and just like that and we have our ground hooked up we come over here and again we look at our pictures and the white one goes on this first pin like this And then the red one goes on the second one. Just like that. So the order is the white one goes on this first pin. The second and third pins are connected. And they're actually labeled one, two, three. So one is the white wire that we put the black stripe on. Pins two and three get connected together. And then this trim pot gets connected to it. So then the white wire connects to pin nine. The red one to pin eight. And then this other white wire of these pairs goes to pin 7. Then the last thing we have to connect is this grayish colored one goes to the side that's the ground, which is this side. Like that. And then the brown one connects to the other pin in the center just like that and we got all our wires connected then again look at your phone picture double check all the colors are going to the right pins and then we just put the screws back in and we will have the new switch installed Again, it's super helpful if you've got a screwdriver that's a little bit magnetic when you're dealing with something like this. And don't start tightening them up until you get them all in place. And a couple of these have little star washers on them, which originally were diagonally from each other. And honestly, these are cool little switches. I didn't even know switches like this existed. I could see using these in other projects in the future. This last one over here in the corner is a little tricky to get in. Make sure you don't cross-thread it. And then just slowly tighten all four of these screws up. And there we go. We have our new high quality selector switch installed. Tuck these wires back down, kind of out of the way. But down kind of like they were originally. Like that. And there we go. And as you can see, we have this flat aligned with the meter thing so that the set screw will be opposite that flat when we tighten up the Allen bolt that holds it on. See as we turn it, and it aligns with tube number two. So you just put that down, align it with the mark, and I usually pull it up just a breath from being bottomed out so we make sure that it's not rubbing on anything we tighten up the sound bolt and we are done installing our new high quality selector switch and there we go better than new so the next thing we need to do is work on replacing these bias pots and replace them with some much higher quality potentiometers so that we don't have issues with the bias from them failing. So we got these rotary switches fixed. Did this one on camera for you guys. I'd done the other one before just to kind of get a feel for it. So we got two new rotary switches in this thing and I've gone ahead and replaced the bias pots on this one channel with this type that stick up just a little bit above the board. I don't know if you can see it but these aren't recessed and 
to me, they're so much easier to adjust when just a little bit of them is peeking out of the top. I'm not sure why they put them down in those little holes, but we're using a little longer shaft bias pots. That's going to be in the next video, and I'm going to show you what it took to replace those, you know, China potentiometers with some really nice V-shaped trimmer pots, like I said, that have a little longer shaft on them and that are available. I've seen that people talking about trying to find these trimmer pots and they're looking for like the exact value. You don't need that. We'll go over that in the next video. These that I'm using are in stock at Mauser. They're $15 each and they're super nice. So that's going to be our next step. We're basically starting out with just doing the repairs on this to get this functioning as it should have or would have out of the box. The other thing I ran into was the tubes that it came with weren't a match set. Two of them were pretty close, but the other two weren't even in the same ballpark. And you can tell that by setting the voltage even on the grids of the tubes and then looking at the current or vice versa, setting the current and seeing if the grid voltage is the same. And on a push-pull amp, at the very least, you need match pairs. So he was already interested in getting some better tubes, so he sent me a set of these KT88-Zs, and this is a nice match set. So we got a good set of tubes to work from, and I think this is going to really, you know, get this thing at a good stable point. He also wants to do some upgrades too, some minor ones. I don't think this one's going to be near as extensive as what we needed to do to the R8, but... We'll do that in a future video. So I hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe. Please ring the bell. All that stuff so you'll see my future videos, especially if you got one of these amps. I'm sure you'll want to see what we do all the way through the process to make this as good as it can be. And again, I don't think this one's going to be super extensive. So again, subscribe, like the video, comment. If you like this, let me know what you want to see. And until next time, have a nice day.